Good morning everybody, welcome back to Lily Lulu. If it's your first time visiting, my name's Karen, I'm the Junk Journal Geek, and today I am helping to kick off um, Val's Crafts Creations first collaboration. That is a bit of a mouthful, I can tell you. So I've printed out the information sheet here, and I will um, put all of the details about the collaboration and the kits and um, links to all the other channels taking part in the description box below this video. If you don't know how to find the description box, um, when you see the title of this video just below the video itself, there will be um, a little bit that says more. If you tap on the more button, then the description box will show up and you will be able to find all the links and information for this collaboration. So I believe there are 16 of us in total taking part in this collaboration, including um, Val's Crafts Creations, who is our host. Um, we are all using kits that have not been released before. Um, and there are, I think, two or three of us each day using the same kit. Um, and I am using the Victorian Roses kit. I will also link below to Val's um, launch video because she did a flip through of each of the kits. I did record um, a flip through of the kit before I started my journal and I can't find it now. <laughs> I've gone all through my videos and I can't find that um, video. That was supposed to be the beginning of this video. Um, so I haven't done a flip through of the kit before I've started using it. So my, my journal that I'm making, um, the other thing I should mention, we are having a giveaway at the end of the collaboration. Um, and I, my, um, contribution to the giveaway will be this journal that I am making. So, um, yeah, just... Um, check out the launch video for more information but what you will need to do is watch each of the videos that are being posted um, I believe you have to subscribe to each channel and then you have to go over to the launch video and um, post a comment on there saying that you have done all those things um, but again I will link to the um, launch video below so that it's easy for you to find. So my journal that I'm making is almost finished um, and I thought I would um, work on it a bit with you today so that you can get get to see a bit of it and I'm going to pop some of the ephemera, the kit, sorry, the ephemera from the kit into the journal and then I will um, probably finish it off camera and then I will come back and do a flip through once it's completely finished um, and then post the video for you all. So let's get started with some of this ephemera. Now I know in here um, I have some um, postcards that I thought I would use as pockets. I've got these pockets, there's an envelope here, um, another pocket here, that's another pocket, then we've got some tags, um, so obviously I need to make pockets for the tags to go in. I've got a couple of these, um, you know, they could be belly bands or side tucks or you could even pop them across the bottom as pockets. So, and some journal cards. <clears throat> So how are you all today? I hope you are all well. And um, that's another fussy cut piece. I've got all my fussy cut pieces there. Here we go, there's one postcard and there's another postcard. There's another one of those pockets and some more bits to be fussy cut out. So let's work through all these and decide where they're all going to go and what we're going to do with all of them. So I haven't um, popped down the inside of my covers yet because I think I'm going to add a lace pocket here um, at the bottom, but I'm not 100% certain yet. I might do something bigger. 
so I haven't stuck those down so that I've got options if I want to do some stitching or anything. Um, so um, I've made two signatures in this journal. Um, <clears throat> there's my other, oh, I'll just leave it in there otherwise I'll lose it. Yeah, it's two signatures. It's not as big, you know, size wise, height and width. It's the same size as I usually tend to make, but it's only two signatures to keep it a bit lighter because I was aware um, if I'm going to be posting this, it's going to be quite costly. So as I say, I wanted to pop these postcards in as pockets um, or tuck spots in here. So I'm gonna pop one in each signature just to give them a little bit of a little bit of ink around the edges just to disguise any whiteness. It's a bit chilly here today. Um, it's very, very grey outside. It was very icy this morning <clears throat> and it's quite chilly. So, so I want to find a spot for these um, cards. Blends in a bit too much. I might pop this one down here. And then I would want to pop the other one in the second signature somewhere. She might like, she might look nice there. So let's pop those down. Um, I keep umming and ahhing with this book about where to put things. And um, I'm going to leave this one fairly... I'm just deciding whether to stick it on two sides so it can be a tuck or whether to stick it on three sides of the pocket. I think I'll do it as a tuck. So I think I'll just do two sides. Um, yeah, I'm not adding anything to this these postcards um, embellishment wise I'm letting the kit do the talking um, and I'm planning <laughs> she says to try and keep this journal fairly simple and empty so that whoever gets it um, you know has got plenty of scope for making it their own so as I say this kit is called Victorian Roses um, Val did give us the choice of which kits we'd like to work on her other kits are purple dried flowers cream dried flowers and steampunk um, I've never done anything steampunk and I didn't feel confident doing that um, I've, I'm in the middle still of working on two purple journals, so I didn't want to do that. But I said, um, you know, I will either do the cream one or the Victorian roses. And she gave me the Victorian roses, which I was quite pleased about. So I've got two pages um, in here that were a little bit big and I've folded them over. And I thought on those pages... I would pop on, I was deciding whether to pop on one of these pieces on each page or one of the journal cards. So let's have a look at our options. Let's pop my view in there so I can find that page again when I want it in a minute. So we've got that one. That one, I don't want that one. That one. That one. I quite like that one because it blends in. So it might be that one. 
and then there's tags there i don't want to use the tags or we could have one of these or one of these um So if I put that one there, what would I have here? I think that one might be quite nice because there's a pink tab there. There's pink paper there you can see as it's open. Um, Same with that one, really. This, I really don't think that goes at all with that paper. Um, or we could we could have one of these on here, so it's, they're, they're a bit different. Each one's a bit different. Maybe I'll pop that one on there. So let's pop a bit of ink around here. So the idea of this collaboration is, um, if you check out the other channels, which I hope you will, you will notice that they are all very small YouTube channels like mine. And I think I'm going to pop a bit of ink on the back of this as well. Um, the idea is that we are all supporting each other and helping each other grow our channels. Um, so please do pop over and check out the other ladies um, and please like, subscribe and um, please leave a comment on their videos because that really does help the algorithm and helps YouTube to grow our channels. You know, it tells YouTube that people are liking what they're seeing um, and then it, that in turn means that YouTube will recommend those channels to other people. Just deciding, I think I want a little bit of something extra on there. Um, and I'm looking at this lace here and thinking something like that might be quite nice and it will also sort of brighten the page up a bit. So I think I might pop that on there. Um, that's my little. Oops. So I might pop that on there just to. Oh, I forgot to put the um, pin back in my glue. Right, which way round are we here? It's so dull here today. I can't really see what I'm doing. That is encased, so I can't tell by the top part. I think that's the right way around. Yeah, it's very, very dull here. So I've got the lights on over my desk, but it's not really helping. It's never the same as daylight, is it? Having an electric light on. Go in, go in. I'm trying to put the pin back in my bottle with one hand. <laughs> Give up. Right, let's pop that. Which way round should we have it? We'll have it that way round. For a little bit of a frill on there. Sorry, I know I'm doing that off camera. Oh dear. I know I'm doing it off camera. But my gluey mat is there. So that's going to go there and then I'm just going to pop that down there. So let's pop a little bit of glue on the other side and I'm only using my art goods for this because I've got it there open. So I'm going to pop that on there just for... A, it adds a little bit of interest to the page and it doesn't look straight. Um, and B, we've got a bit of extra journaling space there. I could have popped that on as a tuck, so you could tuck things in there, but I didn't. So that is folded straight, but something on there doesn't look straight at all. don't know what's going on there. 
and I might put some sort of little tab or something on there. Now, Carol, Carol Laws, um, she has a YouTube channel in case you don't know, I'm sure you do. It's very kindly sent me a big envelope full of whale tail tabs that she'd cut out. And since I packed all my stuff away at Christmas, I can't find it. And I'm thinking one might look nice on there. So when I have to pause for any reason, um, I might grab those. Although I could pop maybe a circle on there to work as a little tab. We'll bear that in mind as well. So that's that one on that page. Now, do I want... I've pulled the ruler out. <laughs> I was put the ruler in the page so I wouldn't lose the page. And then I've just pulled the ruler out. There it is. So I could do the same on here to echo that. And look at that. It's meant to be. It's just, oh, oh no, the trim's missed off the bottom. It won't work. There's not quite enough there to trim that one. But if I trim off that bit that's missing, I don't know if you can see, there's a, the, the um, binding at the top just doesn't go all the way to the end there so that may come unraveled if we're not careful but if I snip that part off I could put that on this side as a sort of tab maybe I wonder if this one would look better very similar aren't they it's not a lot in it I just feel like this one has a bit too much space here, but then that's a chance for somebody to stick a photo or something on there if they want to, isn't it? So maybe we will leave that like that. And I think what I will do on this one is round these corners that will be protruding. I think that will look nice. Shall I throw around the other corners as well? No, I'll leave those. Makes it look a bit more interesting. I've also got this pink, pink and white trimmy bits that I've used. This is the one that I had open. I don't know if that's too white on there. I have used it elsewhere in the journal. Might think about that. So let's ink this one up. really enjoyed using this kit um, I like pink <laughs> I think I've done quite a lot of pink lately for some reason again I'm just um, grunging up the back a little bit with a little bit of ink so let's pop some more glue on this edge Just pop that on there straight-ish. So we've got another little flippy bit there. Again, you've got a bit more journaling space there if you want it. So then I have this envelope and this other one of these pieces. So let's see what we have where so far. I do need to make some more um, pockets and bits and pieces. Um, I like popping things on plainer pages to brighten them up, but then I'm also aware that you want the plainer pages to journal on, so. wondering what to do with this one again we could have a little tuck spot right on the edge there that would be quite nice um, and then if I let's open this up so I can actually look at it oops 
crisps. Could pop a little bit of that underneath so we've got another little frill on the edge of the pages. I like the you know to have some interest on the edges of my pages. Not sure if that's quite the right thing. Um, or maybe that maybe this would be better, this trim along here. I might use that. I need the rest of my laces. Just bear with me while I grab my laces. Okay, I've grabbed my couple of tins of laces and I found my whale tails. Thank you, Carol, if you're watching. I really appreciate you sending those. Right, so a bit of lace bit of lace under my little side tuck here so I think that will look nice because that lace is sort of frilly look at that straight in first one out done let's pop these bits in here as well and I'll just keep them to one side so that they're within reaching distance but they're off my desk on the floor next to me um so my tummy's rumbling sorry if you can hear that i haven't had anything to eat yet this morning i was so keen to get on with this <laughs> so we could have that on the edge there like that and then that frill will be poking out at the side of the book which will look nice so um i think i will ink this first Oh, do I want to round the corners? Do I think I want to round the corners on this side again where you're going to be tucking things. So where's my corner rounder? Uh, that one. And then we'll do a bit of inking. Lace has dropped into my lap. At least it didn't go on the floor. I'm going to look at the other side as well because you're going to be able to see that. And just a little bit of a slight dirtying up of the back there just for fun. Now I'm not sure which way round I want this. Well, it doesn't really matter because. It's going to be sticking out the side of the book so one way or another you're going to see the back of the oh i didn't put the pin back in my glue oh luckily because i filled this glue up was it yesterday or the day before um it's coming out quite nicely so come on stick Stickity stick stick, please. So I need slight. Actually, I think what I'm going to pop on the back of there is some fabric glue because that lace is quite bulky, um, and hopefully. Oh, wrong pin um that will help it to grab onto the page so this glue always takes a bit of time to get going so i'm just giving it a good shake and then i'm going to pop this on the back of here It feels like there's still quite a lot in, in here, but I'm having trouble getting it out every day. I think I might need to buy a new bottle. It's obviously less in there than it feels. <laughs> it's better.
that way. <laughs> right, let's make sure I don't get the glue on the page below. And to get that sort of central. Just hold it there for a moment, give it a chance to grab that glue upside down there in case I need it again. Hopefully I'll have a bit less trouble getting it out then. So that will go on there like that. So that looks quite nice peeking out the edge of the page, doesn't it? And then we've got a little, another little tuck spot there. Um, I'm just thinking if it would be a good idea to stick the top and the bottoms. I think it will be all right because where that glue it will seep that way and it will help stick this top and bottom corner. So I think it will be okay, but I will just double check that. Um, later on to make sure it has actually stuck. So now we have an envelope. This lovely envelope. which I probably need to trim a little bit more of the edges to get that to fold nicely. That sticker shouldn't be with the if kit ephemera. I'm always rubbish at cutting out these um, pieces from all the ephemera pieces from kits. I'm rubbish with a pair of scissors. Um, and always, I always print it and then think, oh, I should have put it through the Cricut, printed it that way, and then the Cricut would have cut it out for me. And then I wouldn't have these issues, but I always forget. So I'm going to try harder to remember. Can't work out if that, there's a right and a wrong way for that. These middle roses feel like they should go that way, but I think it's me. <laughs> because the envelope shape, it looks like it should go that way. So, so I could I could either just I could just clip this in somewhere. And then it would be you know a bit of decoration on two pages if I put it on a page where we have nothing on either side, you know, no sort of printed material. If I can find a page like that, that I haven't already tampered with, like that, this one, for example, if I pop that over the page, you know, you've got something pretty to look at there and something pretty to look at there. Is that page the same? But what I would quite like to do is just stick part of it down so that it's not really an envelope. All my completely plain pages, I've already put tabs on by the looks of it. So that is just one page, isn't it? If I um, glued this just here, then it would be stuck down and you could tuck things in there. And on the other side, you could flip that out and have some secret journaling space. Or whoever gets it could stick, stick it together as an envelope and have another little tucky space there. So that's what I was thinking of doing. Um, just think I might need to take a little bit more off of these edges so that it doesn't interfere. You know, it folds nicely without interfering with the page edge. So where are, where are we? <laughs> So that flap would go over there. 
So that would be on that page like that. That would be on there like that. That would be stuck down there so that we could tuck things in. And then this side would open up and you could journal there. I think I like that idea. So oh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to reinforce this flap. Um, because it is just, what is it? It is just printer paper, normal basic copy paper. So I just want to stick something on there to give it a little bit more strength. should be all right I think of course I could have stuck this on and then cut round it but this way if I make a mistake I can start again whereas if it was already stuck on the envelope if I do it wrong I've ruined the envelope so if I stuck that on there, and I probably will need to trim around it again because, like I say, I am rubbish. Um, I think glue stick would be okay for that. So that's literally just a scrap. This is just a scrap piece of um, paper. I think this is 120 weight. And it's literally a scrap that's left over from um, things I was fussy cutting out. So let's trim around there. and do it straight Karen usually helps trim that there oh I'm going into my envelope now I told you I was rubbish oh I should have done this with my knife shouldn't I a bit late now So there you go, quick tip for you, if you're doing anything like that, probably best to use your knife. Right, I'm going to ink around all the edges, um, makes everything a little bit more forgiving, a bit of ink. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should actually reinforce the whole envelope, but I want it to be writing space. So if I do that, I've got to use something that's um, light in colour so that you can still write on it um, and something that's not too thick because I don't want to bulk the envelope up so much that it you know, won't work, won't fold. Um, what have I got to hand here? Is that too busy to write on? just got some scraps and bits yeah, as I said I went through um I didn't say did I when I started the video I think I said that on my previous bit that I'd lost um 
I went through my stash of leftover pages from other projects and my box of um, scraps and um, pulled out anything that I thought might work with the Victorian rose theme. Um, right, I'm going to stick the envelope to the paper and then cut round it. I'm going to live dangerously. Don't need to do that bit. Could have done that all in one, couldn't I? Would have made more sense, but anyway, didn't think of it. So, let's glue up the back of this. So I've said before, you know, when I get kits, um, I often like to try and do something a bit different with the ephemera pieces, not just use them as they were printed, you know, just to, um, when you're doing videos, you just want to make things a little bit more interesting and try and give people ideas. So that's what I'm trying to do. It's very sticky, this is. Right. So we'll stick that down. It's obviously going to need to be inked again now, isn't it? And again, I could have printed this, you know, the ephemera, I could have printed two-sided so that they were already covered um, on the other side before I started using them, but I didn't. And it wouldn't have made the paper any sturdier so a little scrap there see so yeah, I've um, pulled out a lot of my scrap pages and I'm, I've, I'm trying to use up as much of the stuff I already have this year as possible so um, I say with the journal monthly I'm popping all of my well every time I finish a project I'm going to pop all my leftover pieces in my journal monthly box and use them through the year on the journal monthly projects um, and each time I start a project I'm going to go through my stash and pick out anything you know, out of all my leftovers, my scraps, my my ephemera pieces, pick out anything that I think might work with whatever project I'm doing and try to get as much stuff as I can used up. Because since we moved to this house, I, I don't have any space at all to keep things. And because... I have to keep shoving things in weird places. I forget what I've got. Things don't get used. Um, and it's a shame. I'm just going to angle that one a little bit to try and match the other side. Um, you know, it's a shame to have all these lovely things and then not use them. So a little bit more here. hope I'm not ruining this. So I'm making a concerted effort this year to use up all the things that I have lying around places around the house and also it will help my life you know help make my life easier at home because it means I'm freeing up space to store things I really need to store rather than rather than um craft bits you know like kitchen equipment I have nowhere to put most of my kitchen stuff half of my kitchen equipment lives in my garage and um, our garden floods every time it rains so you know I'm having to traipse down the garage to get out a saucepan that I don't use every day or you know a serving plate that I don't use every day and things like that so um, just not ideal so my our dresser that's in our lounge should really be used as an overflow for my kitchen stuff. It's full of craft stuff. 
<laughs> um, so I would quite like to use the things that are in there so that I can use the dresser for more appropriate things. Just tidying that up. I keep tidying up these edges. I'll have no envelope left in a minute, will I? So um, while I'm... Um, I, ugh, what am I doing? I'm not ironing it, am I? While I'm inking this, it's giving the glue a chance to adhere. Um, and then I will rescore the envelope to take into account... You know, the fact that I've stuck paper on this side, which has not been scored, that needs a tad more glue under there. Right. Let's see how this works now. Whether my idea will actually work. Scoreboard. So this is the edge that's folding, so I can use that as my straight edge. I think I'll do this on both sides, because um, I won't see exactly where it needs to be on the other side. That's not straight. That's really not straight. That's where I've been trimming away at it, isn't it? Right, hopefully that will be okay. Can't line this up with a groove. very quiet this morning so I hope I'm not speaking too soon. Right, pop the scoreboard out of the way. Let's refold. I think this one went on top, didn't it? So that folds like that. So the envelope still works okay. You can see where I've altered the edges there and not matched them up. I'm just wondering whether I should stitch around this but I think, I think we'll just go with it as it is so we're going to pop which page were we doing this one so we're going to pop that there. So I'm going to run a little bit of glue along here. And I think I will also just go up these straight edges. I hope I'm on camera. Yeah, I am. Just got these straight edges just to give the whole thing a little bit more strength and then you've still got the pointy bit to tuck things in and I still didn't get a very straight edge there but it's a bit late now definitely should have used my knife shouldn't I and then we can tuck something in there so that's that side and then on this side this opens up and we've got more journaling space. 
or it can be, you know, these sides can be stuck down and we've got a proper envelope there still. So that needs a little bit more glue in there. We'll just do this, oops, do it while I see it. So I might leave that hanging out to dry for a bit. Let's pop the pin back in. Then I have two more pockets to go in. And I'm just, I was really lucky because these um, cutout parts that Val has made fits my hole punch. I'm just going to check what size hole punch it is. Yeah, I have a, no, that's a flower cone. It's not that one. I have a two and a half inch circle punch and that just about fits this shape. So I was very lucky I didn't have to try and cut the whole circle. Um, I'm just wondering whether my corner rounder will work on the bottom of this, except I don't know where I've put my corner rounder. There it is. Um, I'm just wondering if I use the big one. Oh, it's just, just not quite right. That would have been too lucky, wouldn't it? But we can make a start with that and then just trim the rest off. Can't be. It's a little bit of help. So let's... Round that there. Round that there. I think these are actually more triangular corners than rounded, but um, I'm going with the rounded, so. More ink. And again, these are printed on I'm not sure if it's, I think it's 120 GSM paper, these ephemera pieces. I was going to say it's 200 but they don't feel they don't feel like they're 200 so I think they must be 120. I would normally print this sort of thing on 200 but maybe I picked up the wrong pack of paper. Max could you leave the craft supplies alone please? Right so let's flick through and see what we've got left in here to do. Um, And see where I want to pop those two pockets. So I've got a tuck there. Max, leave it. Max is going through my craft box on the floor. It's got my glues in, and my knives and scissors. I don't know what he's sniffing at, but he's trying to get something. And we've got our envelopey thing there. So in this journal, um, then they're, they're not all pages from the kit, but when I do the flip through, I will tell you which are the kit pages and which are not. So let's go. Do we want one on here? Oh, actually, it would look nice on there because that cream stitching looks like it's the page peeking through, doesn't it? So I think I'll pop that one on there. Oops. So 
Okay, we have the tuck spot there. I'm, I'm debating whether I should have stuck this side down as well. But the tuck would have gone in there, wouldn't it? Let's try that on the other one and um, see how it looks. So I'm trying to make sure I haven't got everything, you know, in everything in the front of one signature and in the back of the other, or I want to try and space things out. I'm also making a good job of sticking my pages together as I'm working here today. there because I think that coordinates nicely with that page um, I'm going to pop this one down with glue on three sides and I did ink it yet Max get down and see if I think that's better and if it is I'll go back and tuck a little bit of glue to the other side on the other one. Let's pop that there. And then, oh, my tummy's is rumbling. I think I will put you on pause after this. Um, I'll go and have my breakfast and then I think I will try and finish this off, do the last bits of decoration and then come back and do a flip through with you. Does that feel a bit better? Yeah, I think that might be a bit sturdier. So, where did we pop the other one? I'm going to pop my ephemera holder in there to give that a chance to dry so I don't stick even more pages together. There. Just going to pop a little bead of glue here. Find my pin. Put my glue on top of my pin. Right, so I'll take a break now. I'll be back again with you momentarily. Quick change. <laughs> It's actually the next day that I'm um, filming this part of the video. So obviously it was very quick for you, but um, a bit of a break here for me. So I think the journal is finished. So I'm just gonna do um, a flip through so that you can see all the lovely pages um, and I will explain what I've done. And then I'll tell you who else you can watch today as part of the collaboration. So the whole journal is closed with this piece of sari silk and at the moment it's not attached and also this piece is not attached to the cover. When I made the cover I deliberately picked this area of the fabric to go on the front because I liked the roses and as it's a Victorian rose journal I thought that looked appropriate but then when I came to decorate the cover I was having a hard time because I didn't want to cover these up. So I made this um, journal card and I've just tucked it into the sari silk on the front. So whoever gets this journal can either decorate the front as they wish or they can use this journal card and tuck it in somewhere in the book, entirely up to them. So um, the cover is made from cardboard and then it's just covered with this lovely upholstery fabric. Um, there's still all bits of strings and things where I've been sewing this. So yeah, it's covered with this fabric and then I stitched all the way round, sewed the signatures in and then I've covered the inside with this 
paper. Now, as I said, I'm using up a lot of, um, of my stash this year. So in this journal, there's a lot of things that I've had for a long, long time. So I can't tell you where everything is from, I'm afraid, um, because I've had everything for so long. But I will point out the kit pages. So in the front cover here, we've got this double pocket. I said to you I wanted to make a pocket in the front. I was initially just going to put this piece of lace on, but I decided it wasn't deep enough. So I used a piece of fabric from my one of my slow stitch packs from Betty and Ivy and then put the lace on top of that. And then I have, I'm not sure if you can see here, at the bottom here, there is a clear button that has been sewn onto these pieces before they were stitched down. Um, and then I've just tied the thread that that was sewn on with at the front rather than tying it off at the back. So then in these pockets, in the back pocket, you've got this tag. Um, and I've just backed it with some packaging paper. And this um, sentiment is from the Victorian Roses kit. Um, so that goes in there. And I say I've just popped a little piece of lace at the top here that matches this pocket and stuck a button on. And then there's just this little envelope in here. It's held closed with this piece of ephemera from the kit. There's nothing in there that's just ready for whoever gets the journal to use however they wish. So they tuck in there. This is a kit page. Isn't she beautiful? I thought that was a lovely start to the journal with her bouquet of flowers. Absolutely beautiful. Um, the back of the kit, I just printed um, some of my own scanned tea dyed paper. And then this is another kit page. And this is a piece of ephemera from the kit. Um, I've tucked in there a journal, a journal card with a pocket. And in the pocket, I've just tucked a piece of the paper that was used to line the inside of the book. I had that left, so I've just tucked that in there um, for someone to use. So we've got lovely rose in the background there and some roses stuck on the bottom there on some rose paper so that just slips in there then here this is a sentiment from the kit and i made a little um scrappy cluster there there is um tea dyed printed paper at the back so some of this paper is at the back then there's a piece of fabric piece of this fabric underneath there then a piece of netting and then this sentiment as I say that comes from the kit that's all been stuck together then stitched together and stuck down this is another kit page the tabs are all just bits and pieces that I have in my stash lying around just little scraps that is beautiful isn't it these kit pages are gorgeous um, this is a piece of good quality office paper and um, that just had printing on the back. I don't know where this has come from. I can't remember. I'm sorry. Again, this is my scanned tea dyed paper with this is a piece of ephemera. Um, there's some fussy cuts in the kit. That's just one of those pieces and I've inked it up. More kit pages. And then this is a piece of ephemera from the kit postcard and I've just stuck it down on two sides to act as a tuck spot. And then we've got a journal card in here. Um, this was just from a master board that I made and then I've stuck this um, sticker on top with the vase of roses and the back is um, packaging paper and another sticker. This is um, part of one of my daughter's dresses from when they were little. This is um, another fussy cut from the kit and this is faux tea dyed paper from Amazon. Well, not tea dyed, but you know, old, old type paper from Amazon. Not sure where that is from, but it had a rose on it, so I used it. 
um, we've just got a bit of use. I did this with you, a little bit of frill going down the edge there to make it look pretty. And then again, this is a piece from the kit. And in there, I've tucked this journal card from the kit. And then this is another um, journal card with a pocket. Max, get down. Journal card with a pocket. Um, again, with that lovely rose image on. And this is another journal card from the kit that I have tucked in there. So they just go in there together like that. This is another kit page. Lots and lots of space for journaling or decorating as you wish in this journal. I did try to keep it um, minimal so that whoever gets sick can really make it their own and make use of it. So that's the centre of the first signature. Um, I've stitched this together with five hole pamphlet stitch and waxed linen thread. This is another beautiful kit page, absolutely stunning as a centre spread. And then another kit page with this beautiful lady and all these gorgeous roses. And that's another fussy cut piece from the kit that I've just stuck up there for decoration. Another page I don't know where from with the rose. And then this is that same paper from Amazon. Um, and it's folded over to make a little flip. This was a piece of ephemera from the kit, um, a journal card. I've just stuck it down on this edge, you know, to help the flip flip. I've added on one of my little whale tail tabs from Carol, that's Carol Laws. Check out her channel if you don't know her. She's wonderful. Thank you again, Carol. And she'd sent this one that had a little lady on there. I'm not sure if you can see that. And I thought she looked very much like this lady. So I thought they went together. More blank journaling space and another kit page. Then on this side, this is a fussy cut from the kit and again this is kit page behind it. I just stuck that onto a little doily that I had and then I stuck it down part way so that it can act as a little tuck spot. Obviously you have to be careful because the doily's got little holes in it, it's not the easiest. And then I just had this piece of paper in my stash and there's all roses there in the background so I thought I would tuck that in so you've got some more journaling space there more roses <clears throat> and then this is just um, a journal card that I had already made and this is some music paper folded over to make a little tuck spot there I've just added some trim this is a fussy cut piece from the kit that I've added did I add that rose no it's not it's a sticker beg your pardon that's not from the kit that's a sticker and there's another little clear sticker there with the rose on <coughs> excuse me and then the music paper goes over the page I've added on this fussy cut of lots of roses another one of those scrappy little um, clusters that I've made um, again it's um, the back is actually a piece of ruffle that I had made that had roses on. I put a piece of lace on top and then the sentiment from the kit. And then this opens out. This is kit page, this is not. Um, so you've got sort of hidden journaling space there, or you could stick that down and make it into a tuck if you wanted to, but it would be a bit close to this, um, the center of the book. So it's probably better off keeping it as a flip, but you could pop um, a paper clip up there to keep it closed and hidden. This is a pocket from the kit and into it I have tucked a tag from the kit. I've just added some sari silk to that. More kit page. Again, another one of my little clusters. Again, it's the this paper at the back, um, a piece of the cover material on top of that, then a piece of lace on top of that, and then the sentiment. That's all been stuck together, stitched together. And then this time I just put glue at the top 
so that we could tuck something under there. And this is um, just a picture of roses from a book about plants, about garden plants. So I just popped that in there. So we had a few more roses. And that's the end of the first signature. This is kit page again, as is this. This may well be my favourite page. This is my favourite colours and I think she's absolutely gorgeous, very glam and I just love it. I love this rose, that reminds me of my wedding bouquet. Beautiful. Again, this is just a piece of um, ephemera from the kit that I've stuck up there for decoration. More kit pages. She's very glam as well, isn't she? She reminds me of a young Catherine Zeta-Jones. More roses. And another piece of ephemera from the kit. And another journal card with a pocket with some roses here. And then this is a journal card from the kit. That's just tucked in there and more roses on the back. This was all very dark roses and I just popped on this sticker with a vase of roses and that just tucks in there. Then we have another flip on this side. So I've done the same thing again. This is a piece of ephemera from the kit. I've added a tab and just folded that page over so you've got a bit of hidden journaling space. Another piece of ephemera from the kit that I've just stuck down as decoration. And another kit page with another beautiful lady and some more beautiful roses. <laughs> this is not from the kit, but I thought the lady went well with the ladies in here. This is from the kit. This is that envelope that we did together. I've just taken one of the tags from the kit, added some ribbon to the top and a little rose sticker on the back. That tucks under there. And then when we turn the page, the envelope flips out and opens up. So you've got some more secret journaling space. Or as I said before, you could stick this down and have it as an actual pocket. Then we've got another one of my scrappy um, clusters up here. This is the same thing again, the pa same paper as this, cover material and another piece of that lace that I used for the pocket at the front and then the sentiment from the kit. And in here, I've just tucked a little bit of writing about roses from that same book that the rose picture came from. More kit pages. The more I look at this, the more I love it. Every time I turn the page over, I think, oh, that's my favorite page. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Oh, isn't she glamorous? This is absolutely beautiful and it's all lined so it'd be easy to write on. And then this is the centre of the second signature with another gorgeous page. More kit pages with more roses. And then here we have a belly band with one of my scrappy clusters on top, made exactly the same way as the others. And then in here I've just tucked a couple of journal cards and obviously the top and the bottom is trimmed. More roses, more kit page, lots of writing space there. This is from the kit, as is this pocket, as is this tag. So just stuck a little rose on the back and added a bit of lace trim at the top there. She sits in there peeking out. Then we have more roses. This is another one of the postcards from the kit that again, I've just glued down on two sides to act as a tuck. And I've popped another journal card in here that was made from the same master board and stuck a couple of stickers on just to add a few more roses. There were roses in the background here, but just to sort of pull it all together. I do think that there is a video early on on my channel of this master board being made and these journal cards being made from them um, but I'm not 100% sure. Another piece of ephemera from the kit 
and we get to the back because we've got another kit page here and then at the back I've done exactly the same as I did at the front so we've got the fabric pocket with the lace pocket on top and the button sewn on and then we have a nice stiff journal card with roses in the background and a sticker of roses there just backed with um i think this was just cardboard actually and then another envelope held closed with a piece of ephemera from the kit and again there's nothing in there it's just ready to be used by whoever wins the journal so this journal will be part of the collaboration giveaway i'm not going to try and tie that back up again now because you know what it's like trying to do it on camera so as i say today is the first day of the collaboration and today you have videos from me the junk journal geek as well as junk journaling with art ephemery and lowe's keepsakes and creations all of these channels will be linked in the description there is a link tree with all these channels listed so that you can find them easily but if you wanted to just take a screenshot of this um, sheet you will have the names of all the channels so that you can go and find them um, as I say today's the first day we're running until February the 4th and at the end of the collaboration there will be a giveaway and as I say this journal is my contribution to the giveaway you will need to watch each video, comment on each video and subscribe to each channel and then head over to Val's Crafts Creations to see her launch video, which again will be linked in the description. Tell her that you've done all those things and then you will be entered into the giveaway. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you take some time to watch all these channels because they're, they're all new and up and coming and they all need support to help them grow so it would be lovely if you could you know take some time to do that and also you never know you might find your new favorite crafter by doing so so thank you for joining me today i hope you've found that interesting um again please do go and support all these lovely little channels and i will be back again with you all hopefully in a couple of days in the meantime take care look after yourselves and enjoy your own crafty time. Bye-bye.